Hey everyone, welcome back to Auto Heck Fishing. Hope everyone had a good winter. Uh, it's springtime and we're back. You know, the first tournament was canceled on Kerr Lake and it's March the 30th right now, but we're on Smith Mountain, so this is gonna be our first tournament of the year. And uh, I'm excited, you know, this is a special place. I love Smith Mountain Lake, it's beautiful. I always kind of think of my dad when uh, I'm up here, he loved this lake as well and uh, it's in my home state. So hopefully we do well. It's really cold as you can see, a little colder than I anticipated for this time of year, but hey, it's Smith Mountain Lake, so hopefully we have some good fishing and uh, welcome back and let's get the year started. Practice starts now, out here. It's funny to see you out here this morning, Sergeant Major. You know, it's funny, I didn't see your leave request in the system. Does anybody know you're out here fishing? Whether Master Guns likes it or not, I'm going to leave. You're going on leave? Yeah. I feel like your leave wasn't approved, Sergeant Major. I'm going to have to ask you to get off the lake and go back home. Yeah? <sighs> I'm on Master Guns authority for leave. I figured for sure you'd be at the offsite. I can't believe you're up here fishing. Well, I'm retiring in about a month. Actually, two weeks. How about yourself, Master Guns? You got two weeks left? You get a little more than that, don't you? Well, you know, I was thinking that maybe we go ahead and recall you, Sergeant Major. With this war in Ukraine and Russia and all, we might need your deadly yeah, skills. TBI. TBI? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what the tunnel said. I can't hold a weapon on me. My fingers don't work. <laughs> you know, we might be better off fighting the Russians than we are trying to catch these bass on Smith Mountain Lake. <laughs> There you go, first bass, Smith Mountain Lake practice. Well, here we are at our home away from home for a few days, up here in Monita, Virginia. Griff's here. I'm here, just finished up the first day of practice. Hey Griff, is Rob staying with us? Yeah. How was the first day of practice wrap up? You got anything? Any advice for young whippersnappers coming up here to fish Smith Mountain Lake? Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it? Put it where you buy it. Don't spend $5 a gallon on diesel. Come up to Smith Mountain Lake. All water. It was rough out there today, wasn't it? It was rough. You want to haul water? No, you can come do it. This is the place to do it? Place to haul water? No, you can come. <laughs> well that's the end of day one practice is over with not a whole lot to report but we're here we made it this is it and you boys can't fish in this weather Chicken out. <laughs> <laughs> we just need one guy to say, heck with this. I'm not well, don't pay out. attention to him. He'd launch in a hurricane. <clears throat> and then he'd get out there and realize he made a mistake. But at least in his mind, at least in his mind, he didn't chicken out. <sighs> this ain't no good, is it? He's like full stop. Right. We're talking about what's coming. Oh yeah, it's going to pour rain here shortly. And the rain don't bother me. We're talking about severe thunderstorms. Yeah, it's going to be bad, I believe. That means lightning. Oh yeah. I like your boat wrap, man. Thank you, buddy. That's nice. Very cool. Well, I guess ain't much of a choice but to launch. One person say, I'm going back. <laughs> Where are you from, man? Uh, right outside of Charleston. Okay, my mom grew up in Oak Hill. Yep. yep. Uh, and then I got an uncle that grew up in Logan. Okay, that's way down in there. Um, all coal miner family, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
on day two, I finally got my stuff together and got in the water, and I met a guy named Ruben Hernandez, who fishes with the Shenandoah Division. The day before, we ran into each other at the ramp at Hales Ford, and we started talking, and I found out Ruben was a Marine back in the 90s out in California, and he was an artilleryman, and we started talking a lot, you know, about the 90s and how the Marine Corps was back then, and we decided we were going to fish together today. I really wasn't sure if Ruben was going to show up because the weather was so bad, but he showed up with a good set of rain gear and a positive attitude, and he kept me company, and I really enjoyed fishing with Ruben. He's out of the Shenandoah Division, fishes as a boater, great guy. We started throwing a jerkbait, um, and you can see I caught a keeper right here. Not a big one, but, you know, it at least told me that the fish would bite a jerkbait. I understood the conditions were going to be a lot different on tournament day. But I thought, well, at least I can maybe run around and fish a jerkbait and identify some areas that are holding fish. And that's what we focused on the first part of the day. And you'll see that, you know, later in the video as, as the day goes on. Uh, we had some real challenges that day with the weather, but a good positive sign for the first stop. So after I caught that first fish in practice, I started running around and jerking again and it wasn't long before I hooked up with another fish it's probably about I don't know between three and three and a half pounds it was a lot better fish and it gave me the encouragement I needed to keep doing what I started out doing um, and I thought well hey I can really find some fish doing this in practice and that's something that I've found you know in practice you go through and you fish one way then you kind of go back and if you have to use another bait or the conditions change, at least you know there's fish in the area. I knew the conditions were going to be different on tournament day, but this jerkbait was at least allowing me to find fish, and that's what we kept doing the rest of the day. And as you can see, uh, the wind really gets worse here in a little bit. I don't regret my decision of not going out there. Well, we just couldn't get on any places to fish. I mean, we got on some. We caught a couple fish today, but everywhere you went, the wind was blowing so hard you couldn't mm -hmm. fish it. Well, and that's what I figured. <clears throat> if you go out there today and find something, you know what I mean? You find something, you know, it's great. Saturday comes around, it's going to be post from 35 degrees in the morning. It's going to be different. 62 degrees in the afternoon. And the sun's going to be shining. Is the sun going to be shining? I thought it was going to be overcast. I mean, it's going to be overcast, but, uh, you know, partly cloudy right. or whatever. It'd be completely different, for sure. Mm -hmm. That's why I figured I'm not going to go out there and burn a bunch of fuel. I can't say it was a bad decision. I say it was a bad decision. So I got up when y'all left. I took me a nap about 10:30. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm rested. <laughs> that might be when you caught your first fish. <laughs> you roll anything out today or figure out anything you might consider on Saturday? I mean, nobody a jerk bait. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nobody a jerk bait. I threw. I threw crankbait some. I didn't catch anything crankbait. I, the places I'm fishing, I, I don't know. I just don't think fish are. I'm just not seeing shallow fish. I mean, I'm sure there are, but I, where I'm fishing, they're, you know, suspended. 10, 15 foot of water, suspended. Yeah, 20. Yesterday, eight, 10 feet of water. You know. Hey, so we're out here on day three of practice. You know, it rained really hard yesterday. The wind blew super hard it's just been really bad weather wise but uh, day three it's cold we don't have a lot of wind right now it's supposed to get windy in the afternoon so we're gonna try to get out here and get a few hours of practice in this morning before it gets bad uh, we'll see what day three practice brings it rained all night the water temperatures dropped so let's see what happens day three practice starts now out here so day three of practice i decided i was going to start out shallow and i caught a fish relatively quickly it wasn't a big fish but you know it was something that 
I thought, well, maybe I can work this and expand on it. I had not fished shallow at all um, yet, and I decided I was going to commit to it. You know, it was uh, throwing a bait I had confidence in and a bait that I could cover a lot of water. You know, day one, I spent a lot of time fishing docks. I caught some fish off docks, not a lot, but I did get a few bites. Day two, I mostly threw a jerk bait um, around some of your deeper drop-offs, trying to catch some of those fish that were suspended. Of course, the weather was really bad, didn't get a whole lot of time to fish. And so I thought, well, day three, the water had actually warmed up a little bit, like a couple degrees. It was probably... 53, 54 in some of the spots that I found. I think probably the rain had something to do with that. The day before, the, the rain was actually warmer than the water that was in the lake. So I thought, well, hey, if I can get, you know, a few good bites fishing shallow, um, throwing power baits, you know, spinner baits or chatter baits. I wasn't really going to throw a crankbait a lot. I just thought it was too fast um, to fish a crankbait. Don't ask. I just... I just haven't had a lot of luck fishing a crankbait in really stained water sometimes. So I threw a spinnerbait and I threw a chatterbait a lot. And I threw it in some muddy water. I did catch some fish. They were just not very big. They were, you know, 14, 15 inch fish. But I fished, you know, seven hours to catch a couple of them. So I just didn't have a lot of confidence in that either. And that pretty much wraps up day three. Hey everyone, so this is the end of my practice. About two and a half days worth, you know, the wind and rain were really bad. The wind's probably blowing 30 miles an hour right now. Caught three fish today, went shallow, fished a lot of dirty water. Threw a spinner bait pretty much the whole day just to see what I could catch. I caught three little fish and really don't think I can catch a limit doing it. My bigger fish seem to be coming out of jerk bait from that clear water down you know around the dam area so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do tomorrow I caught a few fish on a jerk bait and you know, I said three today on a spinner bait I've caught a few on a shaky head it's been really tough for me uh, my guess is it's been tough on everybody else I feel like the fish are just on the verge of coming up shallow probably next week or maybe a week and a half it's like really close but they're not quite there yet which means it's gonna be tough tomorrow it's gonna be 34 degrees when we launch so you know, I was hit for practice and um, I had a good time up here fishing. I always like this lake and we'll see what happens in the tournament tomorrow. Out here. See ya. You need more tackle? You got something like that? I mean, it doesn't seem like you got enough tackle to me. A few more rods, that'd probably be good. How much weight in soft plastics do you think you got? You think you got 75 pounds? What's in the back of the truck? I absolutely. Probably got more than that, don't you? A little over 75 pounds. Probably got 150 pounds, don't you? In soft plastics. My wife watching this or not, the answer's no. I got about five pounds. <laughs> What's up, Vic? Man, what's going on? We're sitting here, uh, I call three people and nobody answered their phone. What the heck? We're all sitting here working on tackle. Everybody's got 8,000 rods out <laughs> with uh, no clue what to throw tomorrow. <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, we hit a G. I just need the address. All right, I'll text you the address. I'll do it right now. We just need the boat ramp. We'll see you there tonight. All right, buddy. Sounds good. Right. Hey, we're in the basement. Hey, Vic, we're in the basement. So don't, in we're in the basement, so when you get to the house, you got to go around the back and go in the basement. Don't go in upstairs, the front door, because the people are living up there. <laughs> I'm going there, naked. <laughs> <laughs> man, where you get these things, dude? These things are cool, man. I know that, but where you, who, where, who makes them? I'll take two. <laughs> hey, 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 you got the coolest tackle, man. Griff's got all kinds of cool tackle over there, George. He doesn't ever give any up. He doesn't, man. He orders that stuff online and all kinds of stuff. Doesn't tell me about any of it. Nothing. Look at that. Look at that thing. I thought y'all was friends. 
Yeah, kind of cool looking, ain't it? Well, who the fuck makes that? He won't even tell me who makes it. He forgot. Nice. He spends like two hours a day going through tackle stuff on the online, looking at boats and researching tackle. What's the practice wrap up, George? What I have found, and about the only thing that I can get bit on, is a jig. So a jig. That's what I'll be doing. Fishing in shallow. Yep. Yep. Okay. Fishing shallow. All right. Skipping her way up under there. We'll see if uh, it holds out. You got all kinds of cool tackle too. You guys got cool tackle, man. I just got regular tackle. That's a neat looking jig right there. That come from Custom Tackle Supply. Custom Tackle Supply. Muffin top jigs. Here you go, right here. Muffin top jigs. Okay. That's a deal. Custom Tackle Supply. GLJ 10. All right, this is a commercial right 10 here. 10% off. <laughs> 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 Let me see them jigs. For, uh, that's, that's I appreciate the, uh, that, George. Yeah, 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 hey, yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Now. Come on. on what are you talking about, man? You talking about? You don't want me to tell you. Want me to test Those these jigs out for you? Two. I'll <laughs> test them out for you. Those are my last. <laughs> Big Vic, Woo. my man. What's up, brother? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah. How you been, man? Just working a lot. Do this thing. What time did you get in last night? One o'clock. One o'clock. Whew. How was Dale Hollow? Ah, that's painful. Yeah? Uh, you know, it's, it's beautiful in there. Is it? It's beautiful. Yeah. It's freaking, I love it. I got you. Uh, Brian, I forget what his name is. Man, that dude, he's from Pennsylvania. That dude is amazing with live school. Is he? Amazing. I need to get better at it myself. But he said that, uh, so we were talking, I mean, tag on, we were within feet of each other. Yeah. And he's like, man, he said, we use it to ice fish. Yeah, he says it's good, huh? And he said, that's how you get good at it. Yeah. He said, but if you really want to get good at it, go out with a crappie fisherman. Because they're really good at it. Yeah. All right, so here we are, uh, getting ready to start the tournament here with Derek Sewell from Virginia. And uh, we're gonna see what happens. The water's cold, as you can see, I'm dressed up right here. It's probably 34 degrees this morning, but looking forward to the day, and hopefully we can put something together. The tournament starts now, out here. See ya. So at this point I have pretty much run all my quality stuff. I've got zero keepers, I've lost three fish, and I'm like back to fishing a couple docks that I had a few bites on in practice. I actually caught a few keepers on them. I didn't expect to catch any big fish in these docks, but that's what I started doing. You know, just trying to get a fish or two in the boat and it's really not looking good. 
course, the irony of it is, I said just before this, I said, you know, I just need to make a random cast and get lucky. So here you go. At this point, I decided I was going to go up north and I was going to fish some of the shallow stuff that I had found in practice that I did catch a few keepers on. I really was just kind of out of places to go and things to do, so I started fishing soft plastic really slow and taking my time. And I actually managed to, you know, put a second keeper in the boat. It was not a bad fish, but you know, it was really painful to catch this fish, and it's pretty much how I ended up fishing the rest of the day. You know, it was just really slow, really methodical, but that's the only way I could get any bites. I'd love for him to go. 13 and 7 I don't know, but that's him. I, I think he might barely move. You sure wanted this thing out. No. Alright, so at this point. It's really getting later in the afternoon. I haven't been able to catch any keepers on a soft plastic. Caught a lot of little keepers. So I picked the spinnerbait back up and I went to work. And I threw it and threw it and threw it. Really didn't catch anything on it. And it was very frustrating. So that kind of brings me to the last stop of the day which is really not too far from the ramp it's just kind of across the lake it was a nice quiet spot and um, you know just kind of reflecting on the day here you know had tried a lot of different things had actually caught a lot of fish um, just couldn't catch many keepers there you go can you hold the bag for me Absolutely. appreciate you all right let's get these two little guys out of here 
smallmouth are pretty, aren't they? What's going on, buddy? Boat 91, auto hex. But you tired of weighing fish, ain't you? Got one yeah. in the bag. <laughs> Next weekend here is going to be worse. Um, yeah, you're right. There'll be more fish caught. Go. I'll give you your hotel coffee to come up here and man. That's it. There's the brand new reel from back to here. Hotel coffee is coming to me. If he wants his reel, he's got to come to me. Hold that for me. All right. He slipped by me, didn't he? Two and two. Alright. Next up is Otto Hicks. He's from Sneak Ferry, North Carolina, fishing on the boat side. Got two in the bag. How's Otto? I've been better, but I'm happy with those two because uh, I didn't know I was going to have two for a long time today. <laughs> well, you got two that's going to weigh three pounds and 11 ounces. And my friend. I worked hard for them. I you worked hard for them, I guarantee you. That's right. Hey, so welcome to the whiffing portion of the video. First thing I'm going to cover with you guys is exactly what lures I was using. People ask that all the time. They want to know. And I, I don't think there's a whole lot of secret lures out there anymore. I just don't. So I don't mind sharing it. As far as the spinnerbait, Fishing that you saw in the video, I was using a Zorro spinnerbait, uh, using a 5 8 ounce model. I think this is a, a 3 8 uh, 5 8 is a little bit heavier, which I like for when the water is colder. It's got a red blade on the front, Colorado and Indiana blades. I did have a trailer on it. Uh, I was using a, you know, just a swim bait trailer um, made by, uh, I think it was a, a Zoom swimmer. Um, swim bait trailer on it and I think for me the key to that bait I was using it on a 5 to 1 gear ratio reel uh, purposely did that I did it on 20 you know I used 20 pound test and I just reeled it as slow as I could reel it it got me a few bites it didn't give me a whole lot of bites in the tournament but in practice I did catch um, some some decent keepers on it and so cold water Low 50s, use a big heavy spinner bait, big blades, put it on a slow reel and just barely move it. I think that works better than say a fast moving crankbait in my opinion in that water temperature. As far as jerk baiting goes, um, for those of you not familiar with jerk bait fishing, you're really, in my opinion, you're trying to catch suspended fish, right? Which is, I think lakes like Smith Mountain Lake that are really deep and clear set up really well because the fish can see the bait for a long ways and they definitely have enough water they can get out and suspend over bait and things like that. Uh, again, you know, water temperature, even in the 40s, low 50s, I think jerk bait fishing is, is certainly a technique you can use. It may not be the best technique on, that, on any given day, but usually the fish will bite it in those water temperature ranges. I was using a Mega Bass 110. Um, it was overcast, so I was using like a bone, white color. Um, and you know it's no secret you can look on the mega bass website and look at their different colors they have some whites and, and some bones and um, the reason why i was doing that is you know sun out chrome out so if it's sunny you get your chrome lures out if it's overcast you use you know more like more your bones and whites and pearls and things like that i was using the full size 110 on rivers sometimes i will use the the 110 junior uh the baits a little bit smaller a lot of guys use the 110 plus or the 110 plus two, I think they make now, which, which gets you a little bit deeper. Um, the reason why I don't use it is simple. I've got a bunch of 110s that I bought years ago and these lures are 25, 30 bucks a piece. And I really don't feel like going out and spending another $300 on jerk baits so I, I can get an extra four or five feet depth. Um, would that have got me a couple extra bites in this tournament if I used a 110 plus? I, I don't know, right? Um, I didn't talk to guys that were using a 110 plus that really, 
uh, could say it made a big difference, but maybe it did. So if I didn't have any jerk baits and I was going to buy some, I would probably buy a couple 110 pluses and a couple 110s. The, um, the attraction about the mega bass, bass lures to me is I just like their action. I like the way they suspend. I like the way they cast. Um, they're great lures, they're Japanese lures, and they are a little bit more expensive. As far as the saw plastic I was using, um, I was using uh, basically a, a TRD rig uh, with just a real small dark green pumpkin, um, you know, with black flake in it. Um, I also threw my standard shaky head, you know, uh, quarter ounce shaky head with the zoom trick worm in the back, green pumpkin. It's hard to beat those lures in these clear lakes. And I usually go with a little bit lighter shaky head. So those were lures I was using. My game plan was I was going to get one day of decent weather to fish, and that did work out for me. Um, and second day, it was really windy. I got the jerk bait out. I used that. When there was no wind, I took advantage of it on the first day, and I fished docks. And second day i used the jerk bait when it was really windy and then the third day as you saw i went shallow and i went some muddy water with that spinner bait so i tried all three spectrums what i'll tell you about smith mountain lake is in my opinion if you've never been there before you're better off fishing the roanoke arm of the of the lake it's it's smaller and i think it's a little bit easier to dissect than you know, down around the dam, that deep, clear water that is just spread out. And I think the fish are spread out down there. So if you're new, go to the Roanoke. You know, launch up by Hales Ford somewhere. Go up underneath the bridge. You can see it on a map. And there's plenty of creeks up there and things like that you can fish. And they, and they have fish in them. I've heard the bigger fish are around the dam. I don't know if that's true because I've caught some nice fish up the Roanoke too. So... The other thing I would tell you about Smith Mountain is it is deep and I think it's slow to warm, slower than you would anticipate. There's probably going to be fish spawning there well into May, maybe even June, just because it's so deep. I think they come up in waves there. And the last thing I will tell you about Smith Mountain Lake is there is a lot of pressure on this lake, but there are a lot of big fish. So I think two options you can really throw something really small and kind of work that finesse presentation and the other presentation is you can throw something really big right i saw guys throwing swim baits that you know look like they were a foot long to me were they catching anything on them i don't know but it's certainly a lake where you can throw some oversized baits and you know if you get a few good bites on it um, you'll be there. I mean, I think it took 24 pounds to win this tournament. That's a huge bag of fish, right? And um, especially for a non-site fishing tournament, that that was really impressive. I don't know how the guy won the tournament. My guess is he caught him jerk baiting or maybe a jig, something like that. Um, that's a complete guess. So that's the whiff them for you. Start at the Roanoke if you've never been there before. Think about using some really finesse lures because there is a lot of pressure. Those docks get a ton of pressure on those lakes. I mean, I watch guys hit dock after dock after dock. The same, you know, the same dock, just guys rotating around. There certainly are specific docks that hold fish there. And uh, the other piece is think about throwing really an oversized lure. And the last thing that I will give you is, you know, the panoptics forward-facing sonar works really well in this lake. I can't speak for, you know, Lawrence's forward-facing sonar or Hummingbirds. I've got a Garmin unit, and I got to tell you, it worked really well. I mean, you could see fish really easily in that clear water, and it was deep enough you could get out and use it. It didn't really result in a whole lot of fish, you know, extra bites for me, but it did give me some confidence that there were fish in the area because, I mean, you could see the bait fish and bigger fish up underneath of them fairly easy. So that's the whiff them. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, our next tournament is Kerr Lake. It's going to be back to back because the first one was canceled. It's at the end of uh, uh, April, 1st of May. It should be an interesting tournament. We're going to fish tournament Saturday, then we'll turn right around and fish tournament Sunday. So hopefully it goes well. But we'll see you next time, and thanks for watching Auto Heck Fishing out here. See you.